Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's so much iconic history here yes. in Gig Harbor and Studio 13 Live. Actually had a chance to come here and check out a little preview ahead of time, right? Yes, I got to hang out at the Harbor History Museum. Not only was it so much fun and educational in an amazing way, but I actually got to touch pieces of history and I want to show it to you now. Hello, I have the opportunity to be at the Harbor History Museum with Stephanie Lyle, director. Thanks for having me. We're so happy to have you here. So it's awesome. Talk to me a little bit about the museum and all these wonderful yeah. things that you have here. Well, the Harbor History Museum, this building actually opened in 2010. And so we've been here for a while, but we tell the story of not only just Gig Harbor, but the whole Gig Harbor area, South Puget Sound. And it goes from everything from first peoples to farming, fishing, round rocks, rooster races, quirky things about the area <laughs> that everyone loves. And of course, the crashing Narrows Bridge. Yes. That's the big story. Galloping so. Gertie. Now, yep. you are going to show me a little bit about that, right? Absolutely. All right, let's get to it. Okay. <laughs> So I am just so excited to get a close up look at this piece of history. Talk to me about this bridge. Well, this bridge is amazing. It was actually constructed in, and opened in 1940. It was actively uh, used for only about six months because it opened on July 1st of 1948 collapsed on November 7th, 1940. And these are pieces from These there. are pieces from it. We're allowed to touch this. You can touch this, yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and you can tell how stiff and sturdy this was. But it's all bent. But yeah. it's all bent. And imagine like you're pulling taffy. Because it did the, the bridge didn't collapse like that. It was hours and hours of time that it was swaying and twisting. And, and so the, the metal got so soft, it actually bent and twist before and as it uh, collapsed. Finally collapsed. Water. And that is why she was called Gallop and Gertie. Is that right? Well, that's part <laughs> of the story. Okay. Yeah, because actually she had that galloping movement mm -hmm. even before the bridge collapsed. It kind of galloped up and down. But the thing that was the... The little, literally the thing that made the, the bridge crack and sway was that it started to twist. Uh, and when it started to twist, imagine you're twisting like, twisting a tree branch or a piece mm -hmm. of taffy and uh, the structure just couldn't hold it. And the wind was not that strong, it was 42 miles an hour, but because it was a solid construction, the wind couldn't go through it and it just picked it up and just twisted it around until it was a mangled mess and crashed. And, and here it is now, this is amazing. So you see the last and only actual um, rendering that was done by David Steinman, who was the bridge engineer, in 1928. This is what was proposed to the people of Washington to cross the Tacoma Narrows. Now, it's a lot different than what was actually built. You can see the design completely changed over time, and that is a whole story into its own right. But the idea was to streamline the bridge, make it very uh, aesthetic, and uh, cut costs. A lot of value engineering Aww. happened in there. Um, so the style of the of the bridge that was actually built was completely different than that original rendering. But the idea was there. Aww. A lot of people ask what happened to the metal that was in the bridge after it collapsed. And a lot of it was used, was repurposed for the war effort because, of course, it's 1940 and it's just before America enters World War II. You guys have yeah. such amazing history here, really. You do, yeah. You even have a whole building that <laughs> yeah. has been designated a historic site. That's so true. We do, right here on the museum campus. Oh, let's take a you look at it. see it? Okay? Yes, yeah. I do, yeah, I do. Awesome. <laughs> This is Midway School. It is. It's the last one room schoolhouse in the whole area. There used to be about 15 of them scattered all around the two different peninsulas. And then this was the last one remaining. It was moved to this site in 2009 and fully restored. And now when we go inside, you want to go inside? Yes. yes. We're going to step into 1915. Ooh. All right. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> This is so cool. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah. I can't believe you guys got all this stuff in here too. Are these yeah. original? They are. 
Um, they're all original to the time period, mm -hmm. but um, they are not necessarily original to the Midway the School. And mm -hmm. the reason why is because we have this amazing school program called the Midway School Experience, and kids come and they actually participate in a lesson from 1915. Here. Here. Oh, in these I desks. I love it. With a fully uh, costumed interpreter, um, Marm, oh. that does reading lessons, the five finger lesson, as you can see on the on the chalkboard. Mm -hmm. They do the memory gym, they do all sorts of re recitations. Sometimes they do music. So it's a really, really fun, amazing program. Wonderful. Fun. So mm -hmm. up next, you're gonna show me a ship. Oh, not just a ship. This is a fishing boat that was 73 years on the water in Alaska and the San Juans. It was built in Gig Harbor and fished by two different Gig Harbor families. Well, this is the Shenandoah. It was built in 1925 and actually built here in Gig Harbor, fished by two different Gig Harbor families. And we're doing a really interesting restoration conservation technique where this side, the port side, is being conserved to its original 1925 configuration. And then on the starboard side, it's actually rebuilt to the 1950s, 1960s bulwark configuration. So that side will be all rigged to fish. It'll be a pretty cool and amazing, um, but we'll be able to step on board and actually see these reconstructions live and in person. Hey! What are you doing up there? I'm just having some fun. Can we do the rest of the interview up here? Yes, we can. Awesome. <laughs> cool, thanks. So I am just blown away at the amazing opportunity I have to be here. So thank you so much for yes, that. Yes, of course. Thank you. Tell me what the end goal with the restoration process is. Oh, I'd love to. It's it's really, really cool. We are not only finishing out the boat and finishing the restoration of the boat, but ultimately this whole gallery will be enclosed, mostly windows, so you'll be able to look out of the, over the harbor, but really to create an immersive environment that both protects the work that we've done on the boat and gives people the opportunity to see what it's like under the waterline where salmon live and that's the kind of fish that this boat caught you know predominantly through its whole career and then to step on board and become a crew member talk to me about when people can come visit yeah so Harbor History Museum right now is open Wednesday through Saturday from 11 to 4 and we invite anybody and everybody that wants to come down we are really fortunate to have support through the city and other funders to provide free admission so it's a really great way for people yeah. to bring the family and just see something different and new and uh, we have a lot of people that come down just to check on the progress of the boat and see what's happening. This has been an amazing mm. experience. Thank you so much for showing me around mm. the Harbor History Museum Yay. and the adorable <laughs> Gig Harbor. You gotta come. That was so cool. I feel like I just got a little history lesson. Yes, it is job. so fun. And they have so many things that you can interact with, which I think always makes it so much better. And they have a brand new exhibit that's starting soon, I Spy, where you get to see a lot more of the historic artifacts that are, that are there. Cool. I, yeah. I like seeing you up on that big boat. There. I know. I was a little scared. It was very high, but I was so excited that I got to try that. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got